The first thing that appears on your screen when you click Start Solo Campaign in a Halo game is this. You are asked to select a difficulty setting. Easy, Normal, Heroic and Legendary. This appears on your screen before you've played a single second of gameplay. Now compare that to Dark Souls. There's no difficulty setting in this game. You just create a character and you start playing. Most people don't really give this a second thought, do they? Some games have difficulty options and some don't. But this has a drastic effect on the experience that you're about to play. Before you've played a single second of gameplay, you have to decide what difficulty you're going to play on. And maybe you don't play video games very often, so easy seems like the obvious option. Or maybe you're some pro gamer turbo smurf who wants to pick a legendary. But regardless of which one of these you choose, Getting this decision wrong can very easily ruin your experience of the game. If you're the newer player who picks easy instead of normal, you run the risk of getting bored of the game because it isn't challenging you enough. But if you pick normal and find it too hard, you might get frustrated and just quit. If you're the alpha male Chad that picks legendary and realises that it's actually too hard for you, you either have to take the hit to your ego by lowering the difficulty, or you have to just give up on the game. A game like Dark Souls doesn't have difficulty options, so you don't run the risk of ruining your own experience by making the game too easy or too hard for you. But there is a sacrifice that's made here. Dark Souls is an excruciatingly hard game. It was designed to be a gruelling test of skill. But this makes the game extremely inaccessible to younger or less experienced players. If you can't take the difficulty in Halo, you just lower the difficulty. If you can't take it in Dark Souls, well then it sucks to be you. You shouldn't have bought the game, go play something else. There are pros and cons to these two approaches to design. Not having difficulty settings allows the designer to more closely fine tune the difficulty of their game based on what they want it to actually feel like to play. Having multiple difficulty settings makes it much harder to adequately balance the difficulties out between each other, whereas skipping difficulties entirely allows you to carefully design the difficulty curve of your game, knowing that this is exactly what the player will experience in their playthrough. Halo 3 says that heroic is the way the game is meant to be played, but that doesn't mean that people are actually going to use the difficulty. If the game was designed and balanced around heroic, then all of the players who didn't play on heroic were playing an experience that was likely not playtested nearly as much as Heroic, because Heroic is the main difficulty setting. Another con of using difficulty settings is that it's extremely hard to balance. Halo 3 came out when I was 8 years old, and I personally remember finding that Normal Mode felt a bit too easy, but Heroic felt a bit too hard. Now that I'm a fully grown adult, Heroic feels a bit too easy, and Legendary feels a bit too hard. Anything below Heroic is basically not worth playing, but Legendary feels kind of frustrating to play on. Games with difficulty settings also tend to find it very hard to meaningfully differentiate the difficulties. The only differences between these four difficulty settings is the damage and health numbers of the player and the enemies. The higher the difficulty, the higher the enemy health and damage, and the lower the player's health and damage. There are only so many numbers that you can tweak in a game, so extra difficulty settings just end up feeling a bit shallow in most games. Games with a single difficulty aren't going to have any of these problems. However, the main con of not using difficulty settings is that you can quite easily alienate your audience from the game completely. Games like Dark Souls, Celeste, Super Meat Boy, The Binding of Isaac, these are all very difficult games. Adding an easy mode to these games would make them more accessible to a wider audience than they currently are. The difficulty of these games turns away a more casual audience. Resident Evil 4 has a very interesting solution to this problem. The game keeps track of your number of deaths and the amount of damage that you take, and it scales difficulty accordingly. Enemies will be less aggressive and there will be less of them if the game senses that you are struggling with the game. This is mostly fine for a more casual player, but more hardcore players, speedrunners in particular, will abuse this system by taking damage on purpose and stuff like that. Celeste, which is a game I mentioned before for being difficult and potentially alienating, actually has a very cool difficulty system that I like a lot. You don't choose a difficulty when you enter the game, but in the settings there's something called assist mode, which lets you tailor the game to fit your skill level. 
You can change the game speed, give yourself infinite stamina to allow yourself to infinitely climb up walls, give yourself more air dashes, and even make yourself invincible. When you choose assist mode, the game very clearly tells you in plain text that this is not the way the game is meant to be played. The game was designed to be challenging. But if you find the game too difficult, you're free to make the game easier to fit your own needs. And I think this is perfect. Celeste is a very hard game, but if your little brother wants to complete the game, he can, because assist mode allows him to modify the difficulty to be easier for himself. Assist mode allows Celeste to be challenging while also being accessible. There's only one gripe I have with assist mode, and it's related to these guys. These are golden strawberries. After you've beaten every level in the game, these will start appearing at the beginning of all of the levels. This is the hardest challenge that Celeste has to offer. You have to pick the strawberry up and take it all the way to the end of the level. Dying while carrying a golden strawberry sends you all the way back to the beginning. So essentially, to collect the golden strawberry, you have to beat the entire level deathless. Problem is, you can just turn on assist mode and make yourself invincible and fly your way to the end of the level with the strawberry, completely invalidating the challenge. So you might be asking, H2, why do you care if someone cheats to get a golden strawberry? Why does it matter to you? Well, it matters to me because there is a global golden strawberry counter in the game's menu, meaning that this global counter will be affected by people using assist mode to get the reward. I know it doesn't really matter, but it just doesn't sit right with me that the most challenging aspect of the game, something that is supposed to be a sign of a skilled player, can be completely circumvented by just using assist mode to literally no-clip to the end of the level. I got about half of the golden strawberries on my own in Celeste, and it feels kinda bad knowing that I could have just mashed X all the way to the end of the level. The reason I didn't just mash X to the end of the level is because the challenge is part of the fun, and I get that, I understand that, but it still just feels a little bit bittersweet, doesn't it? Like, I'm okay with people being able to beat the levels, get all the other collectibles, even doing achievements is fine, but Golden Strawberries could have probably been uncollectible in assist mode. So now here's the part of the video where I state my broad opinion on the topic, because why stay impartial and objective when you can firmly plant your feet on the ground and upset half of your audience? So, what does H2 think about difficulty settings in video games? Well, I personally feel like asking a player to choose their difficulty setting before the game's even started is a bad idea. The player has no idea what they're getting into, and difficulty settings vary wildly between games. There's even a difference between the normal difficulty in Halo 3 and in Halo 2. So expecting players to know what difficulty is right for them in all of these different franchises is very unreasonable. But having more in-depth difficulty settings is fine by me. Assist mode is a great way for the developer to hand tailor the normal game's difficulty curve without alienating a more casual audience. Having a scaling difficulty like Resident Evil 4 can make 10 different players of varying skill levels all feel like they're experiencing the same thing while the game tunes the difficulty behind the scenes. I also think that games not having difficulty settings at all is also completely fine. Dark Souls not having an easy mode is fine. Not every game needs to be 100% accessible. Some games are made to be very tough, and if the designer thinks that adding difficulty adjustments will ruin the challenge, then they shouldn't add them. Simple. All in all, I just find that this trait of asking the player to choose a difficulty at the start of a game is very outdated. The player doesn't know what they're getting into, so I think games should try and find more interesting and unique ways to make their game more accessible. Because after all, if your difficulty settings cause an experience that is too easy or too hard for a player, then you've alienated that player far more than if you had no difficulty settings at all. Thanks for watching.